What do we light in the mandir is the diya. And as long as the lamp is lit, it is auspicious. If the lamp flickers and blows out, it's inauspicious. Kehte hai ki nahi kehte hai sa? So what is the meaning of diya? Diya doesn't mean just the lamp. Diya means to give diya. Diya. So if the diya is lit, which means the power to give, if it is there in me, life is auspicious. But if the diya flickers, which means I finish my power to give and I start seeking and asking, life becomes inauspicious. Inauspicious means pain and sorrow. So all that we need to do is shift from who we are right now, shift to give and give to everyone and give always. Why? Because giving is my nature, nothing to do with the other person. Today what we are doing, if she is nice to me, I am nice to her. If she is very nice to me, I am very nice to her. And if she is not nice to me, If he wished me on my birthday, I will wish him on his birthday. If they didn't wish, why do I need to wish? This is not a giver. This has become a business. Devi Devtas, deities means they do not see who is standing before them. Look at the tree outside. What does the tree give? The tree gives shade. The tree gives fruit. Does the tree choose who to give and how much to give? No. Somebody can hit a stone at the tree, it will still give fruit. Somebody can water the tree, it will still give fruit. Why? Why can't the tree be selective? Why can't the tree be selective? Why does it give to everybody? Water. Here. What does it give? Life. Someone can abuse water and waste water. Somebody can save water. Does the water choose who it's going to nurture more? No. Why? Because the nature of water is to give. That means the dharam, the nature of water is to give. The dharam, the nature of the tree is to give. The dharam of everything in nature is to give. And that is dharam, religion. Religion is not how we look at it today. Religion means dharam. Dharam means nature. Nature of the tree to give. Nature of water to give. The nature of the human being is to give. This is what they teach us. This is our dharam. Dharam means to give. To give to all. All and always. Which means if someone is nice to me, I am nice to them. Someone is very nice to me, I am nice to them. Someone is not nice to me. So those who are nice to me, I am nice to them. Those who are very nice to me, I am very nice to them. Those who are not nice to me, I am nice to them in the same tone. Which means it's not going here and there. I am nice to them. This is holding on to religion. Religion means dharma. Dharma means nature of the soul. Nature of the soul is to give. It's only when we don't give that time we are away from our religion. Can we live one day of our life like this? If the tree stops giving oxygen, what will happen? This is what happens when we stop giving what we are meant to give. We. And this is what's happened to us. This is what has happened to us. Giving love, giving respect is our nature. As long as we continue giving it, we'll be fresh, energetic, vibrant. When we stopped giving, thinking that we are supposed to get it, this is how the face changed from this to what we are today. Which means the energy inside me started getting blocked because I was not giving love. I was wanting love and I was wanting love the way I want it. The other person says, I respect you. I said, no, you don't. I said, I respect you. I said, no, you don't. So what makes you think I don't? 
It's because if you respected me, then you would have done what I told you to do. Do we do that or not do that? So we want people to be our way. And unless they are our way, we are not happy. If we are not happy, we're not radiating love and respect. And when we are not radiating love and respect, we are radiating hurt, disappointment, rejection. And when we are radiating that, it's not the other person who gets affected, it's we who go. Because please remember, we stopped giving out our oxygen. We stopped giving out. So the tree is radiating its oxygen not for us. The tree is not giving out the oxygen for us. The tree is giving out its oxygen for, for its own life. The day it stops giving out the oxygen, the tree will. The day we stopped giving out love and happiness and respect, we started becoming. All that we have to do is go back to who we were. Go back to who we were. And when we give the first person, when I give somebody something emotionally, the first person who will get it will be me. Anyone ever given anger to someone? Yes. So now visualize the scene. Here you are giving anger to this person. Who is the one who will get it first? The giver or the receiver? The giver. It was meant for the it's meant for the receiver and I thought I'm giving anger to you. You may be smiling and walk out laughing at me. The receiver has a choice. The giver has no choice. Because the giver is the creator of that energy and the first person who experiences it is me. If we had to check the pulse rate, the heartbeat of the giver and the receiver, who do you think is affected more in terms of the physical health? The giver. Very good. So simple. Which means who is the one who receives it first? The giver. And that's always the case. It's the giver who receives the energy. So if I give anger, it's I who experience it. If I give love, I experience it. The day you release something from your mind and you say, I forgive today. Who's the one who experiences peace? I. They may still be unhappy, but I experience peace because I give. So the giving is not for the other person. The giving is for my own happiness. The giving is for my own purity. The giving is for my own inner power. The more I give, the powerful I am. The more I'm standing this side, and just see who are we even asking for love and respect. Go home in the evening and tell your spouse, I want respect. They'll say, don't even ask. I'm tired with what all that has happened during the day. I have nothing to give right now. In fact, I need some of it. And so the people whom we are asking, they are asking us for it. So both of us stand like this. And then we say, last three times, I was the one who spoke first, I was the one who started the conversation, I was the one who first called you up. We are doing business in every relationship transaction. Because somewhere someone said, relationship is about give and take. So we are counting, I give this much, how much did you give? Is it every time I am supposed to call first? And by doing that, we suffocated ourselves inside. We became so calculative. I have done this, now they should do this much. This is So much business is going on inside throughout the day because we are not being our normal self. If you just shift to this, the one who is giving, you don't have to check who's coming. They don't check who's coming there before them. They don't even check who they are, what they did, what they are doing right now. They don't check what intention you are coming to them with. They don't check whether you have come to say thank you or whether you have come to say sorry or whether you have come to ask for a problem solution. They don't check anything. They only give. And that's why they don't have to think too much. They are not thinking too much. What to give, whom to give, why to give, should I give, should I not give? If I give, will they start taking me for granted? 
If I give this time, will that mean I will have to keep giving? All that calculation is not going on on that mind. And that's why that mind is reflecting purity. And that purity attracts us to come here. Purity is attractive. Divinity is attractive. You bow down to them. You worship them. Everything in nature which gives is worshipped. Which are the trees which are worshipped? The sun is worshipped. Why do we worship the sun? Because it gives. Water is worshipped. Why? Because it gives. Tulsi is worshipped. Why? Because it gives. The guy cow is worshipped. Why? Because it gives. Everything that gives is worshipped. If we give, if we give, we will not need to ask for respect. Respect is a natural thing that we will receive only because we are giving. So it's all just one thought here. One thought. I give to everyone always. How should I give to everyone always? By me not consuming their energy but always being in the giving side. So if someone today doesn't behave the right way with you, doesn't behave the right way with you. It's their energy. Their circle is a little, their circle is a little dark. Now there are two options. Their dark circle can influence me or my white circle can influence them. Two options. They can pull me down into their energy field or I can pull them up into my energy field. Why do we come to the mandir? Because the divinity and the purity pulls us up. We feel nice after coming here, no? So why do we feel nice? Because the divinity and purity, the divinity and the purity pulls our vibration. Similarly, we can be the one for people around whose divinity and vibration will pull the vibrations of people. Every house needs one. Like in every house, we have a mandir. Do we have a mandir in the house? And in the mandir we have... One deity, one deity and one mandir is enough for the house. But now that one deity will have to be here. Which means one giver in every family. Now you ask yourself, am I ready to be the giver of my house? Whatever you want from people, start giving it. Because it's only when you give it that it flows through you. And it's only when it flows through you that you get it. People can respect you. Your children can respect you. But if you're not feeling nice inside, you're going to look at them and say, nobody respects me. They can love you. And you're going to look at them and say, no one loves me. But they are saying, but we love you. How do we prove that we love you? We said, you don't need to prove. I know nobody loves me. Finished. So how much ever the other person is giving, if I am not creating it, I will not experience it. This is the science which we've gone all wrong with the equation. We thought we will experience love and respect when we receive it. We will experience love and respect only when we create it and we give it. One equation if we change, everything will change. So from today, bless yourself every day with one line. I need nothing from people around me. I need nothing from people. I only, I only give, give, give. Just only change your vocabulary to begin with. Just change your vocabulary. I need nothing. I only give, give, give. I am a Satyogi soul. I am a Satyogi soul. I'm creating Satyog. It's only when we shift to giving, we will create that beautiful world that the world is waiting for. At about 3, 4 in the morning, which means 3 a.m., 4 a.m., not p.m., a.m., some people are going to sleep. 
and some people are waking up. Someone will walk at home at four o'clock and say, good night. And someone will be waking up and saying, good morning. We are going through that time in the world where some people are sleeping and some people are waking up. That's why we call it awakening. Which means waking up in terms of our thinking. Waking up to a new way of living. Waking up to a new consciousness of giving because Satyuk is near the corner. It's like that 3, 4 in the morning where you believe that it's night but actually the morning has begun. Visibly it might look like a night but actually the morning has begun. You believe that this is night but actually the morning has begun. That's the time in the world cycle. We think it's pitch dark, everything is, seems to be going wrong, there is so much pain, there is so much sorrow. But amongst it all, there is a certain number of souls in the world who have started their awakening. And we're all seeing that. The interest to meditate, the interest to do yoga, the interest to go back to a natural way of healing, the interest to a sattvic high energy lifestyle. Don't you think it's on the rise now? Don't you think it's on the rise now? People want to be vegetarian. People want to be pure. People want to be celibate. People want to do everything which is going to make them like this. This is because these are the people for whom it is a good morning. But now when we start waking up in the morning, we have to take care that some people around us are sleeping. So that time is a little risky because sometimes the people who are sleeping can say, go to sleep now, why are you waking up so early? And so when you think of creating a shift in your lifestyle, some people are around you and say, why do you need to be like this? You were better the way you were. Go back to who you used to be. So if you think of being a vegetarian, your friends will say, why do you need to change? Why can't you just be who you used to be? They are trying to put us back to sleep. Two options. Either they can put us back to sleep or, or we can make some noise around them and they're going to say, they just don't let me sleep. They will also change to that lifestyle. Our vibrations will radiate there to them and people will start changing. And the more people wake up, Satyog is here at the corner. I only need to choose which side am I. Am I on the side which is making more of Kalyug into this Kalyug or am I on the side which is going to create Satyuk? It's like the old house is breaking down and some of us have started creating the new house. Because before the old house collapses, the new house should be ready. The world is not going to come to an end. The world is not going to finish. Let whoever say what they are saying about the world. It's not going to come to an end. It's going to go through a transformation. When we say the world is going to come to an end, it's as if like finish. There is nothing left on the planet. No, the world is not going to come to an end. The old way of thinking is going to come to an end. The old way of living is going to come to an end. And before that, the new way of living will start. So the house is not finishing before that the new house is being constructed. But who is going to construct that? By doing a shift here. Sansar, the world, is created by sanskars, our nature. As will be the sanskar, so will be the sansar. As is my nature, so will be my world. Who created this world as it is today? How many of us contributed towards creating this Iron Age world? Contributed towards creating Kalyug, Iron Age world. Which means who creates the world? We. Who will create Satyuk? We. How? By shifting our sanskars from Kalyug to Satyuk. Which means what all is not allowed now to create Satyuk? What all is not allowed now to create Satyuk? Anji, any negative feeling. So which all we have to strike off from the list today? Anger, very good, out. Hatred, out. 
jealousy out, impatience out, <laughs> fear out, what else? Expectation out. Purity, peace, love, happiness, this is emotional health. Attachment, expectations, lust, greed, jealousy, fear and the list is emotional disease. Why did I shift from health to disease? Because I did not take care of my health. How will I shift from disease to health? Just by taking care of my health, emotional health. So we don't need to specify fear, ego, anger. It all gets taken off together just by building up the emotional immunity system of the soul. I need to start taking care of my emotional health. But now I need to know that all these emotions are going to go out of the list. And I will shift now to a sattvic lifestyle. We're going to become deities. <laughs>